the kind of stuff I'm having to do right now because the weather is just horrible and <laughs> I mean can you fly in weather like this so yeah that's why I am indoors not flying <clears throat> Wishing I could fly. My favorite quad here, the 155. Um, but instead, I am messing with antennas. Alright, I'm going to show you how to cut down an antenna to make it shorter, if you need it shorter, or um, turn it into a RPSMA. From an SMA or an SMA from an RPSMA. But what you would need to do that first is to go onto eBay and type in RG402 SMA or RPSMA, depending on whichever one you want. And then you'll see all kinds of different stuff. Um, they're the connectors and the pins, they come together as a set so you can get super cheap like 10 of them or you can get a hundred of them here's a hundred for 32 33 bucks or you can get 10 of them for five bucks I usually get like 20 pieces at a time I'll get 20 of each so here's 20 for 1090 and it comes with a connector and the pins so if you need SMA or, or RP SMA I'll I get half and half so well, I was back when I was making antennas. I don't really make them as much anymore. Just here and there whenever I need one. But um, that's where you get them from. Um, I usually look at the shipping to make sure it says... Uh, what the hell does it say? Dang it. It'll say... Oh, shit. This one's USPS first class from LA. So that's actually a good deal well no it's not that great a deal I think I get them for cheaper for 20 of them but in the US that's actually a really good deal for a US based one but if it's a China one you want it to say not standard shipping you want it to say um, damn I can't remember the, what it says uh, oh e-packet Yeah, it'll say e packet. Try to find one that says that. Not a lot of them do it. A lot of them, see, here's one for e packet. It's $2 shipping, but it's worth it because it, it'll come in less than 10 days. So if you use the free standard one from China, it's going to take a month or longer. So just make sure it says e packet or find one in the US. Um, it's usually hard to find one in the US. I'm surprised that I found that one right off the bat for fairly cheap. 20 of them but anyway here's the antenna I'm gonna be cutting down it's a regular uh, Amway one I just uh, put black plastic dip on it and here's the connector and the pin this is very easy to do so you take your wire cutters and cut it wherever you want it to be at but actually make it about I don't know a quarter to three eighths inch longer than what you want it to end up being because that part is going to be sticking inside of the connector. So I want one pretty short, so I'm going to do like right here. So just cut it. Then I take some pliers and kind of make it round again. Best you can, doesn't really matter a whole lot. Just makes it easier to cut. And take a razor knife, a razor blade, and just Go in about 3 8 inch, just real lightly so you can just get the outer layer. Roll around it. I got plastic dip on this one, so it's kind of messing me up here. Okay. Just spin around 
in a circle then you should be able to pull this off just like that exposes the metal part that's the ground shielding okay then you cut deeper and the next part inside of the metal braid is uh, plastic so you'll feel it pushing into the plastic real easily and then it'll get hard when it hits the center piece so you want to stop there and then just keep pushing around in a circle down through the plastic and I go about uh, maybe like two or three millimeters from the top just push down kind of hard then turn it a little push down turn push turn push so you go all the way around in a circle then you'll be able to just pop that off just like that now it'll look like that now it'll look like that okay oh, I guess I should have plugged my iron in this is very easy to do and uh, it's not only if you want to cut it down to make a shorter antenna but if you like I said if you want to make a SMA into a RP SMA or the other way around you can do this and it's fast and easy and uh, in my opinion better than using an adapter because adapters just take away from your video so all right um, so next we're just gonna be tinning the ground shielding and then we're gonna tin the inner piece there and then we're also gonna tin the pin and that'll be it so I'll start with tinning the pin so I take a pair of pliers and pick it up like this and then just stick it on the iron just get solder down in the in the hole there just like that there was solder just down in the hole in the end Um, actually, I, I was mistaken. I don't want to uh, tin the shielding, just the inside piece. So we're going to tin that real good. Then I'm going to grab the SMA pin. And I'm going to stick it up to the end here and just touch the iron to it until it melts down over it. like that and then I got a little bit extra solder there so I take my razor and just scrape down to smooth it out I used way too much but at least I know it's gonna be a nice strong connection and just make sure there's nothing on the top there kind of make it straight okay so that's ready to go inside the connector and then you just push it down if you put if you put the pin on the end just right it'll make it to where you push as far as you can and the pin will be exactly where it needs to be which it is but then you have no spot right here to uh, solder it together so I got to pull it back apart and strip away a tiny bit more of the outer layer. Just a tiny bit. It's like a millimeter or something. Come on. All right. Perfect. The pin is exactly where it should be, and I got a little bit of room to solder there. So I'm just going to stick the iron on it and start soldering and just put a bunch, a big old blob. Big old blob right here. And then, um, Gonna turn it around, I guess, and 
put another blob on the other side. You want to make sure you don't get it up inside here where it spins or else it won't spin anymore. Then I'll remove it from my helping hand and just kind of touch it and turn it so that I get the solder all the way around. That looks real nice. And you're done. Now you can uh, add some heat shrink. Um, the one thing I don't really like about this is uh, when, I make, uh, when I make antennas, I start with the connector first, soldering to the RG402, and then I do the antenna part after. Because that way when I'm done with this, I can slide uh, heat shrink over it and make it all nice and pretty down here. And then at the top, it just comes out perfect. But doing it the other way around, you have to put heat shrink on this way. And it has to be big enough to fit over the connector. And then it's too big to shrink down onto this. So what I do is just put a piece that's like about this long. Sometimes I'll wrap electrical tape around first and then I'll stick a piece on. But it doesn't even matter. I don't even care. I, I could just leave it like that. But I'll probably just wrap some electrical tape. Because that also makes it stronger, you know. So, let's put one piece, little piece. And now I got a nice stubby little awesome antenna. Done. So there you go. Very easy to do. I almost forgot uh, another important part of this. The part that you broke or cut off, you can actually make this into another antenna, and then you got two antennas for the price of one. Well, a little bit more because you got to buy your own copper wire. And our, uh, actually just copper wire is all you need and solder but uh, the copper wire I use is uh, 20 gauge and you can get rolls like this I think this was like 20 bucks and it was a full roll I, I've made hundreds of antennas with this um, but you can also find that on eBay and if you want to actually make your own completely you can get some RG402 you just type RG402 in on eBay and uh, it's everywhere for cheap this is uh, three dollars for three feet it just takes a little while to get here because it's from China but yeah it's awesome